let's talk about moving from frustration and anxiety and stress to flow and enjoyment of your English language journey. Now, this isn't really any different from the way we move from feeling stuck and anxious about anything to feeling joyful and flowing easily in anything. But as we're talking about English and developing our English skills here in this channel, let's look at these five ideas that we can implement to shift from feeling one way to experiencing the journey a different way. Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Tanya Meyer and I am the founder of Confident English Training, an English language training online program that I'll leave a link for you to look at down in the description box below operating at the intersection between efficient language acquisition and use, the practice of awareness raising, and increased levels of happiness, joy, and well-being. What's not to love? So if you're in a place of stress or frustration, and you feel that you're not moving forward with your English, then the first thing you can do is to adjust your mindset because mindset can be something that either helps us move forward or keeps us stuck in, in, in a place of frustration. So what kind of things keep us stuck as far as mindset is concerned? Well, feeling that we need to be perfect. Look, this happens to me too, but now I want to be more spontaneous. And one of the things that stops me is trying to be perfect. And, and creating a perfect video is not really leading to my videos being seen by more people. I think that I need to be more authentic, more natural, and just speak to you the way I speak to my clients, my learners, people who are within my community. You are no different. You can be in my, in my community, so do check out the links if you want to contact me then you are able to do that and I, I want you to really see that your struggles to become more confident and, and fluent in English are my struggles and everybody else's struggles. So uh, the first thing is addressing this perfectionist mindset. And within that, reframing this attitude that we have to making mistakes, you know, because like I say, it happens to me too, that I want my videos to be very polished and perfect with no mistakes. Uh, but it has happened that I, I do all the editing and I take a lot of time, you know, I do things very carefully because that is part of being discerning. It's important to be discerning and to be able to distinguish between things. And I've just filmed a video about discernment, which I'll leave a link for right here for you to watch later, or also in the description box below, there'll be a link there to that video. This question of not wanting to make any mistakes uh, is something that I need to overcome, and perhaps you need to overcome too. Let us be okay with being human and making mistakes. Let's shift that mindset of ours from thinking that mistakes are the worst thing that could happen to us to reframing that into, okay, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this mistake? This is an opportunity for me. And now it's like, oh, okay. It's okay, not. the second thing we can do to move from stress and frustration to flow in our English language development is to take a break take a break. You know, it's okay. I am 
developing my own uh, Portuguese skills. If you've been to the channel, you, you know this, that I meet with my uh, friends in Rio de Janeiro by Zoom every week. So that is something that is constant. I do at least once a week engage in, in Portuguese, but that might not be enough. And so I regularly listen to podcasts, I, I watch videos in Portuguese, documentaries, uh, BBC newspaper is in Portuguese also, and I have all of these, I'm reading a book, you know, there, there are lots of sources of Portuguese that, um, that I open myself to, but of course, I've, I've been selective in terms of uh, what I want to, or in what way I want to learn Portuguese. But I've noticed that my efforts are not constant. So while I do meet my friends on a regular basis for an hour and a half a week, that might not be enough for me to really, you know, develop my skills, uh, a, a lot very quickly, but that's okay because I'm I'm not in a hurry, and I don't want to be listening to Portuguese. Maybe not every day. It's it's not something that that I that I do every day. And sometimes I take a break for two, three weeks, or even longer. Even though I am meeting my friends on a weekly basis, and that's helpful. So you having. A, a weekly anchor in, in English can be helpful, but it might not be necessary. In fact, it might be counterproductive for you to be expecting yourself to be fully engaged, full steam ahead in English every day for forever. That can be that can be counterproductive. So it's one of the features of my program, lifetime access. And that means that you can step back, rest, and that can be really helpful in allowing English to be processed more deeply and in you becoming a much more effective learner. So advice number two is to prioritize resting and taking a break when you feel that it's necessary to do so. Without, without that meaning that you disconnect completely. Find a way of remaining engaged with the language, but without necessarily having, you know, too much to do. The third thing you can do is to reignite your passion when it's time to do so. If you've taken a break for a while and you've only been engaging in English periodically once a week with an English speaking community, for example, and now you feel rested and you feel okay, ready to, to step up, find ways of doing that through content that is interesting for you. By this, I mean, what do you want to be able to do in English? Do you want to be able to socialize? Who do you want to socialize with? If you ask yourself how to improve your English, who can be our first question. Who do you want to develop your English skills with? Or who do you want to follow on YouTube or on any other platform? Who uh, has interesting podcasts in English that you want to learn from? When? When are you going to do this? If it's helpful for you to put it in your diary, when am I going to engage with English? Next, we have what. What kind of activities am I going to be involved in to develop my language skills? Now, I already have several videos in which I've given you suggestions about things you can do to develop your English skills outside of a classroom. I'll leave a link for that video also in the description box. Look for material that sparks joy for you. So that's the what. Um, the where, well, you know, where are you going to engage with English? And, and finally, the, the why. So why is it that you want to develop your English skills? What do you want English for? The fourth step is to cultivate peace and calm. 
because it is through cultivating peace and calm that we can become more effective in whatever we do. If we are constantly stressed and busy and we have lots of things to do, then it, it might even be the case that we're not doing any of them effectively. Uh, we're just keeping ourselves busy and, and life is just zooming by. So really making it a priority to cultivate peace and calm in our life is something that can change our whole life. And especially in the morning, uh, I, I do have um, a video in which I speak about my morning routine and, and so what I do is I wake up uh, about half an hour earlier than I, I would normally wake up if I didn't do these things. I wake up, uh, I, I smile, I think about what I'm grateful for, uh, I open the, the, the curtains and I can see that it's dawn, you know, that it's getting light. I, I appreciate everything that is within me and around me and really center myself and observe, observe my inner processes. What is going on in my body? I can appreciate every day that my body is still healthy, it is comfortable. The absence of pain is a reason to be grateful what is going on in my emotions. Yes, am I feeling upset? If I, am I feeling depressed? Am I feeling stressed? And this is something that happens to me, believe it or not, even though my videos are always quite um, upbeat, there are times when I notice that my energy is low, that I'm feeling quite tight. And if that's the case, I don't reject this feeling. You know, I, I accept it. It's okay to feel this way. And when I decide to do that, when I decide to be accepting with whatever is there in the moment, then, you know, automatically things become softer, things become more more supple, more, more, there, there's an ease to it. And I'm able to, to, to be more, more accepting. So bringing this calm and joy and acceptance to whatever is going on in my emotions, and then what is going on in my thinking? What am I thinking about? Sometimes it's easy to know what I'm thinking. I can follow my thinking with my awareness. Sometimes I'm able to be free from thinking. When I'm able to be free from thinking, that's so joyful just to be comfortable and to be enjoying the moment without a lot of uh, mental activity. That's a wonderful thing that I, I cultivate freedom from thinking and then I also become aware of what is going on around me, what is going on in, in the world. Is there a lot of noise? Is it quiet? Usually in the morning it is quiet and I can hear the birds uh, waking up and I, you know I really appreciate that and it brings a different energy to my to my whole day. The fact that I stopped and I prioritized bringing peace and calm into my life. And that also allows me to be productive and effective throughout the day. So that is step number four. And the fifth step is to empower your independent learning. Again, whatever improvement you make with your English, might be partly because you're attending lessons, you know, so lessons, formal English lessons, whether you go to a language center or whether you employ the services of a, a private teacher, that is going to be very useful. But ultimately, it is not the lessons and it is not the teacher that create progress, you know, what, what is going to help you really become confident and fluent in English is 
the degree to which you engage with the language yourself because the transformation from insecure and uh, not fluent to confident and fluent takes place within yourself and is a result of these actions that you take, all the actions that you can take to develop your skills yourself. Be discerning in terms of the content that you, that you listen to, note-taking, journaling. Yes, uh, there are many ways in which you can journal and, and uh, process language and all of these things are part of the program that I created and that you're very welcome to explore more about in the description box. I'll leave a link there for you to look at. And if you're ready now, you can apply for a, a, a strategy call, a consultation call in which you talk about where you are and where you want to be and we can discuss together if uh, the program is for you. The program might not be for you and, and this is something that I make clear to everybody who books a call. You know, it's not necessarily the case that you are going to join the program because the program isn't for everyone. It is for people looking for ways to develop their English language skills in an independent way while at the same time being part of a community and having the opportunity to join weekly calls as well as uh, sit and be be engaged with practices that are contemplative. Normally our, our senses are focused on the outside world. What's going on out there? What's going on out there? What's going on in the world? Let me think about this. But there is a, a deeper aspect to our experience of being alive. Yeah, that experience comes from or our awareness of that experience comes from uh, contemplating and looking at things more deeply. So if any of this is resonating with you, then I really do encourage you to explore the links. And remember also that you can download your own copy of my free guide, How to Revolutionize Your English, which is full of more strategies and tips and suggestions that you can put into practice to continue developing your skills. Uh, your English language skills on your own. I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, I hope you like this video and that it's helpful to you. If it is, then please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and then I will see you in the next video. Take very good care until then. Bye for now. <laughs>